So let's look at the following conceptual example. Let's suppose that I take a box and I place the box against the wall. And then I let go of the box. What will happen to my box? Well, let's see. Let's suppose I take my following box and I place it against the wall and then I let go of my box. What will happen to my box? Will my box remain in place or will it fall? Well, if we let go, we see that the box actually does, in fact, fall. But what exactly causes the box to fall? Well, if we look at the following diagram and we look at all the forces acting on my box, when I let go of my box, the only force that's actually acting on my box is the force of gravity. So that means because the only force acting along the y-axis is gravity, we will have a net force that points downward, perpendicular to my ground. So that force, that net force, accelerates my box downward. So once again, what happens to the box if we place it against the wall and let go? Since the only force acting on the box is the force of gravity, the box will accelerate downward. Now, what happens if I take my box and I apply a force against the box? So I apply a force that acts perpendicularly to my wall, to my whiteboard. Well, now we see that the box, in fact, doesn't move. Why is this the case? Well, it turns out that if my box is in place, if my box does not move, that means there exists some force that cancels out the force of gravity. Remember, in order for my box to remain stationary, the net force must be zero. So that means the net force along my y-axis must be zero. But what exactly is creating that opposing force? What opposes the force of gravity? Well, it's the force of friction. But where does the force of friction come from? Remember, the force of friction or the maximum static force of friction is equal to the coefficient of static friction multiplied by my normal force. So that means a normal force must exist for this frictional force to exist. And in fact, a normal force in this example does exist. What happens is, when I apply a force that acts perpendicular to my wall, what happens is, according to, the third, uh, according to Newton's third law of motion, the wall exerts a force back on my object, on my box. And this force is known as the normal force. So I apply a force on my box, which points in this direction. And then the wall, according to Newton's third law of motion, applies a reaction force backwards. That has the same exact magnitude. So this is my normal force. And now, because we have a normal force, we have a frictional force. And this frictional force will oppose the force of gravity. So once again, according to Newton's third law of motion, if we apply a force perpendicular to the wall, so this applied force, the wall will apply a force back on our box and will act in a direction opposite to the applied force. Now this force is known as the normal force. This normal force in turn creates a frictional force that opposes the force of gravity. Now as long as we apply a hard enough force, as long as we apply a strong enough force, our object will remain stationary and that's because the frictional force is either equal to or greater than the force of gravity. And in this case, the object will not move. Now, what happens if my normal force is not high enough? Well, if my normal force is not high enough, let's say if my force is very weak, my object will begin to move. And in this case, the object continues sliding downward because the frictional force is less than the gravitational force. And so we once again have a net force that acts downward along the wall, along the y-axis.